Natasha, please. Thank you, Mike. Hello. I'm very excited to be here. And before being too excited, I, I have to, oh, password. Mm. Aha. I think we're ready. It's nice to see everybody. Um, I'll start with a mind-blowing fact that I just read recently. Did you know that our brains can recognize up to 30 billion metaphors per second? <laughs> and that's why I love theater. Because it's a place where I can process and express metaphors in dynamic, audio-visual, performative ways. I fell in love with theater at a very young age. Uh, but growing up as an actor, I realized I didn't want to really repeat somebody else's lines over and over again for the rest of my life. As a playwright, I wasn't crazy about the linear storylines. And as a director, I didn't buy into the rigidity of the staging. I wasn't sold on theater's conventions. I was excited about its potential. What I envisioned was cinematic, sensational, shape-shifting, magical. It was like a hallucination trip without the drugs. <laughs> and so for the past 12 years, I've been exploring new ways of storytelling and inevitably discovered technology. And not being a scientist, two things happened. I was provoked to think differently. And more metaphors happened. What if orchestras flew in flux of drones from city to city, deploying music everywhere? What if artificial intelligence choreographed a ballet or rewrote a show every single night, keeping it fresh? What if our every action could be part of a live, interactive, global show? But today we're talking about mobile to scale, or almost, is it? <laughs> it's, it's almost to scale. <laughs> but this is so much more than a smartphone, right? This, this is really a handheld supercomputer and a transitional object uh, for the deeply wired world that we are about to enter with the internet of everything, augmented reality, mind-controlled objects and environments, mobile will eventually become integrated within another mobile technology, our own. Okay, today my phone is my teacher, my trainer, <laughs> my doctor, my navigator, my translator, my messenger, my entertainer, my memory, my memories, my mall, my secrets, my secretary, my network, my life. My phone knows me intimately, and that is not a metaphor. And these are not my pants either, if you want them. <laughs> but there's just so much power, functionality, and personality in this device. So how could we use this handheld supercomputer in theater? We're there. House lights go down. We can feel the built-up anticipation buzzing around us. We've been waiting for days. It's like we're children again. And in the darkness, we hear, ladies and gentlemen, turn your phones off now. <laughs> One ring and you're out. One click and you're dead. The use of flash photography is strictly prohibited. 
okay, I understand there are rules and regulations and you want my undivided attention, but surely we can work this out. <laughs> And if a show is extraordinary, you will get my undivided attention. And so, while most shows begin with this announcement, no matter how creative it might be, one in two Broadway attendees will still pull their phones out at one point or another during the performance. Why couldn't we invite people to leave their phones on? on silence, yes, but on, and participate, interact, and yes, please be my guest. Take pictures, post them, tag them, share them, snapshot them, whatever you do with them, promote it. Some people are very scared that technology will dehumanize the experience. And their argument is that um, theater is a communal act. It sounds true. It appears to be true. But is it really? I may go with a friend, but I don't know who the person on my left or my right or three rows below me. Who, who are you? <laughs> yes? I'm Claire. Hi, Claire. <laughs> But why couldn't we get to know everybody in the theater, create a real communal network with our phones? Crazy Mission comes, and I want a cocktail. I call it Crazy Mission because it is a crazy mission. I've got 15 minutes. I'm on the second floor. There's only one bar, and the line starts from my seat. Couldn't I pre-order a drink or snack ahead of time and have it ready for me by then? I understand it's been tested and didn't work as planned, but it might be worth exploring again. We are entering an on-demand economy. Now, if I don't want a cocktail, I may want to read about the show. I could open the Playbill Passport app or read the, uh, the real Playbill or both with augmented reality. Headshots come to life, actors talk to me and share the mishaps of putting up the show and promote the next one. It could be perfect for Amélie. My preferred style of theater is universal. It's language free. But most musicals and plays have dialogues and only the people speaking that language can understand it. Yet my phone can translate on the go. Walking into a show should feel like walking inside the United Nations on steroids. Translate any play in any language in real time. Let's assume I were from Switzerland, which I am, and didn't speak English. I should be able to enjoy Le Livre des Mormons, the Book of Mormons, <laughs> en français, in French, as the play unravels before me. Those opera glasses project supertitles uh, in the language of your choice in real time during the performance. The Opera de, Opera de Paris plans on marketing the glasses to arts organizations around the world this year. So we're talking about accessibility. And if we're talking about accessibility, what about the estimated 285 million people around the world who are visually impaired. How can they get to enjoy a Broadway show? My Singularity University colleagues have developed an app called AI Poly. It uses artificial intelligence and your phone's camera to describe what it sees in real time. Patio, chairs, cup, pot, cup. Coffee cup. Pepsi. Cherry. Pepsi Coca Cola. Coca Cola. Trash can. You are looking at a new Apple earbuds. Hey, wow. <laughs> that is all right. That sounds just like magic. I mean. 
the algorithm is still learning, but soon it will understand complex scenes and could describe an entire ballet or a, a Cirque show to you. How cool would that be? Your very own personal arts commentator in your ear. Theater from the ancient Greek, theatron, a place to see, a place for viewing. But our current spaces don't allow us to see everything. What if we could use our devices to sneak behind the curtain? The ultimate backstage pass. God, I would love to follow Al Pacino as he birdmans his way down the corridor. Or you could stage actions backstage as part of the actions on stage. Or engage in moments not accessible from our balcony seats. Cinema does this with close-ups. We could do this with that. <gasps> you could create an entire show where the action hip-hops between the stage and your screen. What? I love the movies, but they ruined everything for me in a beautiful way. After experiencing a film at the theater with 4K projector and amazing sound system, it's hard to get back to the low resolution live theater. I recently saw Hamilton and the album I play on my desktop sounds better than the live experience. Why couldn't we hear the sound as richly as it is intended to be? This company here, Active Listening, has developed earbuds that act as a sound studio in your ears. It gives you a volume knob, equalizer, special effects to transform real world audio. So what happens when we can sound design our own musicals, plays, life? So, uh, sight, sound, Theater is a sensorial experience, right? But we can't feel much from a tactile point of view. My friends at eMERGE have developed a technology that allows you to feel touch from your phone and even thin air. Imagine the possibilities. Feel the phantom touching you softly. What about Taylor making a show for its unique audience? For Bob, Greg, Benjamin, Vanessa, Natalie, Eric, Aaron, Peter, Peter, Jason. I know you're out here. Or another example that I like so much. What if there was a play called Gossip? where by using face recognition software and your Facebook data, actors on stage would talk about everybody in the audience. The new smart comedy hits. Or what about allowing the audience to dictate the outcome of the show? This company, Whirligig, in Austin, Texas, has done it. Deus Ex Machina is a choose-your-own-adventure performance that gives total control of the play to the audience. It tracks one to 12 potential storylines that include 12,288 possible experiences. Who knows? Our future playwrights may work in tandem with video game designers. But let's talk about the elephant. In your palm. <sighs> Augmented reality. We've witnessed a phenomenon with Pokemon Go, which tickles the surface of what's to come. Augmented reality will radically redefine the way that we experience life, especially when mobile leaps from our hands to our eyeballs. There's an opportunity here to digitize, dematerialize, and democratize special effects on stage special effects which we are and will be seeing much more of. Because instead of building heavy scenery that are cost prohibitive and cumbersome, 
we can use projection mapping to transform one set into millions of pieces, sensors to, to make the space trigger with all sorts of animation, animation which can transcend the stage to our phones, to our eyeballs, to our rooms. We could bring an entire Broadway show to our living rooms. Let's talk about another phenomenon that virtual reality is experiencing. It's no longer theater in the round. It's theater in the donut. That's right. We're no longer sitting in a round looking at a show. We are now standing in the center looking at a 360 degree field of view with the freedom to walk anywhere and connect the dots of our own storyline. This donut phenomenon will accelerate the emergence of immersive experiences like Sleep No More here in New York City. Site-specific, interactive work in which the audience walks at their own pace through a variety of theatrically designed rooms. Immersive experiences like Sleep No More use processes similar to the making of VR and can easily be translated for it too. In turn, those creating content for VR may need to test and rehearse in the real world. We might see interesting cross-collaboration evolve between theater and virtual reality. But back to immersive experiences, right? Now add a global positioning system in your pocket, and the director knows exactly who you are, where you are, and can prompt experiences accordingly. Now amplify this to an entire city, and the entire city becomes your set. Have a look at Detour. It produces GPS audio rocks. Hello. Are you ready to explore? Then put your phone in your pocket and let's go. I'm going to take you where the tourists don't go. Today, we won't be shackled to a tour group. We'll be on your schedule at your pace. Our eyes won't be glued to guidebooks or gadgets. Just keep your eyes open and follow my lead. We'll walk down back alleys and push through secret passageways to where the real heart of this city beats. You'll get to walk in someone else's shoes, like a fisherman who's been coming here every day since before you were born. When I first came down here, some old Italian guys took me under their wing. They showed me how to fish and saved my life at least once. Bring friends if you want. We'll listen together. I'll point out wonder in the seemingly mundane. We'll peel back layers of history, as if the walls could talk. Imagine what we could do with theater in a city. Pretty mobile to me. But speaking of mobility, what I really cannot wait for are STGs. Show to go. A show to go. You heard the news, right? Just Wednesday? Uber is allowing customers to summon self-driving cars from their phones in Pittsburgh. Google, of course, a leader in the field, has been testing its fleet for several years. We know that uh, Tesla Motors offers autopilot, and Ford just announced plans for autonomous car sharing services. Call it what you want. Cars that drive on their own are here. So what happens in a car if we no longer need to drive it. <laughs> Order a show to go. Open the app, pick a play or act that you want to experience. The car pulls up, get in, and let the actors entertain you while you reach your final destination. Don't you love this? <laughs> I love this. I would order a show to go all the time. I'd love to work on this, but it's not, it's not, it's not a project right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my colleagues and I are actually developing a show called Billion Billions. It's a working title. Do you like it? <laughs> well, we, we can talk later. Uh, it's a roller coaster through time in real time. So technically, the show will be different every single time that you see it. It contextualizes real time data in theatrical ways so that we can feel it by animating it through projection-mapped environments that the performers interact with. It's going to be cinematic, sensational, shape-shifting, and magical. And it also will transcend 
the space itself? What if actions taken during the show could affect the real world outside? So we're leveraging mobile technology and real-time data to create a show that responds to real-world events and where the audience can respond back. So imagine watching a scene, an exhilarating scene that features climate change, wind machines are blowing, the music is speaking, performers flying, the visuals surrounding vivid and intermixed with baffling statistics. It's cathartic. Your phone lights up and invites you to donate to an organization tackling that change. The winds come down or blow harder, the next scene unfolds, and there you've done it. You've taken action. It was simple, entertaining, and meaningful. I believe in bridging the best of showmanship, technology, and social impact for good. And I'd love to tell you more about it, but I know we're running out of time. So the conclusion is that there is no conclusion, but everything to rethink about storytelling and theater. And it may not all work out, but we won't know until we test it, try it, risk it, have fun with it. We've been stuck in a climate of rules and regulations, remakes and repeats. It's time to invent again. It's time to evolve. We live in unprecedented times, and that's not just a saying, it's happening. It's Moore's law combined with the law of accelerated returns. Every industry right now is at risk of not being relevant if it is not willing to self-disrupt. Theater is ripe for innovation, and that means content. Content also needs to step up, needs to update, step up to the interconnected intricacies and information of today, as do we. Our brains are growing. This mobile thing is nothing other than a hyperextension of ourselves connected to anything and anyone at any point. And if our brains can recognize up to 30 billion metaphors per second, surely we can come up with a few solutions. Thank you so much for your time.